In this beginner's guide, I'll be showing you how to create a DJ mix or even potentially a live set in Ableton Live's session view. Hi, my name is Akito. I'm a London based DJ and beat maker. In the first beginner's guide to creating DJ mixes in Ableton, we work within their arrangement view, which is great if you want to lay down a quick mix to export and send out. In this alternative guide, we'll be using Ableton Session View instead, which will allow more maneuverability and spontaneity within your mixes. This method is perfect for those planning to play out with the selection style of more traditional DJ formats. Whether you're playing in a club or recording a mix from home, this method feels to me the closest to DJing you can get in Ableton. You can also use the same method to gather your loops and prepare a live set. The essentials of this video will cover the basic methods to prepare for either so make sure you stick about until the end and catch all the tips. First is preparing your music. Once you've gone and booted up Ableton, you can import your audio into the clips of Ableton Session View. Simply drag and drop the song or loop of choice into one of the clips. Once it's found its new home, double click the clip. This will allow you to warp your audio and get it quantized to the grid. This will allow for seamless synchronization of your clips providing they are warped correctly. We'll set up the start marker and delete any markers previous to it. We want to make sure that it's set just before the first transient or the first beat. Once you've set the marker, you can adjust it more accurately by holding down shift and left clicking, then dragging the audio left or right. After that, we'll adjust the BPM so it sits comfortably on the grid. If the BPM's correct, but the transients aren't hitting on the grid properly, go back to the warp marker and adjust accordingly. I'll then check up and down the song just to make sure everything is fine. Once I see it's all good, I'll then set the warp mode to Complex Pro. I'll also drop down the volume by roughly say 6 dB as warping bumps up the volume louder than an unwarped file. This will also give us more headroom while we are mixing. The only long thing with this process is you will have to do this with every bit of audio you choose to use within your mix. But once it's done, it's done and you can always build up and around your set, developing it as you go over time. If you are using loops, make sure you enable the loop button. You also want to check out your start and end points to make sure they're set at a full bar so that they loop perfectly and indefinitely. Next, you want to activate the crossfader. Make sure you're in the session view. Hit view and then scroll down to crossfader. Once it's enabled, the crossfader will appear underneath your master fader to the right of your Ableton session view. Assign channels to crossfader. Now you have some audio clips warped to perfection and crossfader active. You can assign your channels to either the A or B side of the crossfader. You can simply assign this or change it anytime by clicking and selecting either A or B on your desired channel. Easy. Arranging your clips. One thing you may want to consider before performing is the arrangement of your clips in the session view. You can drag and drop them as you see fit. Once they are warped, they will remain so and retain any edits you have made to them. Using MIDI. If you have a MIDI controller at hand, hook it up and see what you can achieve with it. You can assign faders and knobs to your most used parameters, giving your DJ or live set a more human feel. If you don't have a MIDI controller, you can still achieve everything via the mouse. It just won't be as quick or hands-on, but we'll get the job done. You can always automate things later too, if you plan on recording it. Next is recording your mix or live set. 
If you plan on recording your live set or DJ mix, all you need to do is hit the record by your transport controls, then play as you would. The audio files will appear laid out in your arrangement page. This is super handy as you can revisit and make any final tweaks before exporting the audio. I really hope you've gained some value from this video. If you have, please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. I'll leave a couple of videos you may find useful in the end card, so feel free to check them out. Until next time, take care. Love. What? <laughs>